Hello everyone. Um, today I am going to show you another em style of envelope journal. Um, this is just a, a last piece of elastic to hold it closed and I wanted something unencumbered. Um, I'm going to use a file folder, a legal size file folder. You could use a regular size file folder, you just would not have this pocket. I used junk mail envelopes, which I painted, and I, we're going to create a two signature fun recycle junk mail envelope, uh, envelope journal. This is a pretty good size journal. It's nice and fluffy right now, partially because the pages were pre-painted and so they have some bulk to them. Um, I'm sure that it will get even fatter as I put things into it, but this is what we're going to make today. So I hope you'll follow along. I hope, hope this is interesting to you and have fun. Hi everyone. I am here today because I want to show you how to make a, a junk journal and I have a specific reason for making mine um, but a junk journal using these envelopes these return envelopes that we don't use um, these has, you could use brand new envelopes if you wanted to use brand new envelopes please please go ahead and use brand new envelopes but my thing was these these end up in the recycle bin um, a lot of them well some of them are security envelopes but a lot of them are just plain this happens to be an envelope that came in oh that one's a little torn too much see here this is this is too much for what I want you could use it but it's not what I want um, I have another one down here that's torn but the the flap is still in pretty good condition that's the thing we need we need these flaps so um, I'm going to set this one aside and I'll I'll leave out this one um, we're going to use that kind of an envelope and a file folder now this happens to be a legal size file folder because it's a legal size file folder I'm going to end up with a pocket if you don't have a legal size file folder you won't have that pocket you will do everything else but it just won't fold up and have a pocket so those are the two things we're going to need is a pile of these and depending upon how many of the envelopes you have depends on how many pages are in your um, your journal and I think that I have about 20 uh, pages or 40 envelopes roughly I'm, I'm not going to guarantee I can count later the first thing we need to do to these envelopes is just to trim off the ends of them and I used my scissors I found my my cutter was a pain I you know this is not something that's we're, we're not out for perfection here I cut it as straight as I could I just took a little piece off each end and for me it didn't matter if the pages were different sizes so I am using just all of the envelopes okay Oh, I guess I should have told you you need a glue stick, but you know, that's, that's, uh, we're going to open these envelopes just like this. And I take one of the flaps and I bend it backwards this way. And all I did was take this glue stick. And put it on that flap. Line this flap up. 
think so. And then put it on this flap. So if there's still glue on that, it'll just help to add to your the strength of your piece. And then see, it will fold in half to fit into your signature. All right. And I just did that to all of them. Now this is the one that was a little bit torn. It's not going to matter because we're going to have this other piece to help hold it together. But you do want to have a pretty decent flat. Sewing the signature in is also going to help hold this together. Okay. Now then, you can decorate these pages if you want. You can take, let's just take a little paint. And do some credit card manipulation, like just scrape some paint on there. It all depends on what you're going to do with your papers. Now, if you don't want to decorate these, don't feel the need to. You can decorate them later. I like to have um, a little bit of paint on my paper before I start things. Um, so, Better let that dry. So you can decorate them like that. You can use your brayer and brayer off some pages or jelly print pages. I mean, decorate them in any way you want. I like to decorate a little bit ahead of time simply because then I don't have quite as much going on after the fact. You don't have to decorate them at all if you don't want to. This is um, a technique that's already been posted and I will link down in the description box below where I used up my last little bits of paint and it's kind of a smooshy technique and it's watered down paint and it's it came, you know, I, it gives my pages a little bit of something. So then we're going to fold our pages in half. And we're going to tuck them together like a signature. Now it might help if you had a bone folder to fold these because if you have gotten paint on them, they're a little stiff. But and then you want to tuck these and create signatures with them. And as you can see, I've got two signatures. And just a minute and I will actually count the pages so that you know exactly how many I'm using. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six 
16. That's what I thought. Each signature has eight full sheets or 16 pages. So that's what the insides are going to look like. Mine are already painted. Like I said, they don't have to be painted. They could be white or blue or whatever color your envelopes are. The next thing we need to do, since our signatures are made, and I made two signatures. The reason I made two signatures because I know it's going to get bulky and I wanted to make sure that I had um, it, it goes together a little bit better. I'm going to sew it in, in in two signatures. Next, and I don't know if you can see this. I'm hoping yes. Okay. You see there's some marks on this and I wanted my cover painted as well. So, if you want your cover painted, now's the time to do it. I jelly plated my cover and then I did some mark making on it so that I have a nice fun cover. Oh good, you can see the marks. I was afraid you wouldn't be able to see the marks on my painted. But you see these lines? The file folder is designed to bend in those areas. As it gets fuller, let me, yeah. as it gets fuller, it's supposed to create sort of a bottom. Well, once I have painted this on both sides, and I also covered both sides with one layer of, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I apologize, Mod Podge and glue mixture. It just makes it have, it last longer for me for what I'm going to do. Um, it, since it's been done open, that line is not so, it's not folded now. And I'm not going to fold on that very center line that this originally folded on. I'm actually going to fold one line over to one side and one, I'm going to make a fold on the other side. Okay. Um, so that I have about a half inch spine. I'm going to, I'm going to score and I'm, I'm working on the inside of my cover. Okay. This is the outside. This is the inside of my cover. And I think you can see them. You see that line right at the tip of my ruler. Okay, I'm going to score on that first mark off from the center. First mark to the right of the center. And that happens to be a quarter of an inch. This ruler happens to have a quarter of an inch mark on it. And I'm just going to score it. I'm going to hold it really careful and score it very carefully. Make sure you score all the way down. And a quarter of an inch. Now it might help if you keep your ruler in place. And bend it with the ruler in place. And then come back and fold it. Okay. So that's a quarter of an inch to the to the right. Now I need a quarter of an inch on the other side. Well, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to have to turn it around. And again, use my little ruler and my bone folder, and I'm going to score it again a quarter of an inch from that center line. Again, holding the ruler in that position and bending it up helps. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so I hope that made sense. We now have a fold one quarter of an inch each direction from the center line of the file folder. So it's a quarter of an inch over here and a quarter of an inch over here. And we're, it's not real bendy now because of the paint. Now if you're using a plain file folder, it's going to bend in the middle. It's all right. Not a big deal. But what we have is a file folder now with a quarter inch spine. You see here? Okay. Now we need to fold up our pocket. If we are using um, a legal size file folder, we now have to fold up our pocket. And I am going to fold my pocket where the flap is. Okay, so that my edges here are all the same. You could have cut your flap off. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to fold it up. But I have to determine how big these are. And I think they're roughly, that's what I thought, about 10 inches. They're about nine and a half inches. That's what most um, envelopes are, is about nine and a half inches is at the max. So if I go 10, I will have plenty of top and bottom so that it doesn't, the pages don't hang out. So I'm going to go 10 inches. And I'm going to put some marks on this so that you can see it. It won't show. Let's see, what can we mark with? This will work. Oh, I guess that wasn't a very big mark, was it? And I'm going to go all the way across. This is so that when I have to lay my ruler on there, to score it so that it will fold, I can see where I need to put the ruler. And I'm just going to line my ruler up with all those marks that are 10 inches. Now, if all you had was little envelopes and you were doing a small version of this, you could use cardstock and um, not do a pocket you could you know there's there's a there, there's so many things you could do with this method come on get out of the way And again, it's going to be easier if I just lay my ruler and do a little bend. Okay. Okay. Now, here is one place where we have to re-bend these. Now well, that's not straight, quite straight. Let's get this pocket bent straight. I must have drawn a little crooked. There we go. Okay. Okay, right now the bends or the folds have this pocket folding in. Well, I have to reverse those folds so that they fold out. With the rest of the 
file folder. Okay. okay. So now we have this. And we have a half inch spine and our pockets. And I'm going to go ahead and glue my pockets right now. Um, there's a couple of things you can do. You can just glue it. One of the things you want to do is you... Let me see here. I can't get it where you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Um, I like to use score tape and glue. And, or, or double sided tape and glue. The reason for that is that, can you see what I'm doing? There we go. Okay. Um, if you use just the double sided tape, the things you stick in the pocket have a very bad habit of sticking to the tape. So, if you use the sticky tape and I'm going to use this art glitter glue and I'll put a link down in the description to this um, it's just one of those things I hadn't used before and my friend Lisa taught me about and so what I do is I put the I really like this glue um, I put the glue the tape down I put the glue just inside the tape okay, come on now hold up And then the tape will hold the glue in place. And I should have done both sides at the same time. Okay, that's, that was dumb. Sorry, guys. Um, do both sides. But the tape will hold the glue in place while it's drying. And then your items that you stick into the pocket won't stick to the tape because the glue is there. Okay. Okay. So our cover's all done. Our pages are in two signatures and now we need to sew our pages into our cover okay I'm gonna use some wax nylon uh, wax linen and I need a needle Mm, that's a pretty big needle. That's all right. It will do. And I'm just going to tie this inside. I'm not going to put a lot of um, uh, dangles or anything outside here. So I'm just going to tie it from the inside. But I need at least twice... And then some to work with, so I always do about three times. I'd rather have too much than not enough. Go ahead and get this threaded. Oh, this is getting to be a long video. I had hoped to have done enough ahead of time not to have make it too long. Now here's what I'm going to do. You know that we have a quarter of an inch on this side and a quarter of an inch on that side. Well what I am going to do is I am going to put my signature holes right down the center of each quarter inch mark. And I have this centering ruler. 
and I really like this centering ruler. It happens to be a Fiskar centering ruler. I use it all the time. You guys see me use it all the time. It has um, like quilters marks on it. Eighth inch, quarter inch. Um, it gives me a lot of marks, but it's more than important. More importantly, it has got a zero in the middle and works out to both ends on, on one side. Therefore, I can just lay it down, pick marks in the middle. Is this the small one? No. Did I, did I do with it? Oh, put it right back. I just can't see it. Um, and I'm going to put, I'm going to use five holes partially because I know what I want to do with this. So I'm going to go down the, the center. This is the center, very center of my thing. This is one quarter out. So I'm going to be about an eighth of an inch out. Um, it's an eighth of an inch less than, it's actually five and five. We had a 10 inch height. There's my center line. There's my center line. So I'm going to put five holes. I'm going to start in the center and put a zero, one at the zero line, one at the two, and one at the four. Two and four. Okay, and I need the exact same marks in the center of the other quarter inch, the one that's on this side. And I am actually, go so I remember that I have to do zero, two, and four. That's our holes. And I'm going to go ahead and punch these holes due to the fact that uh, I'm, I'm going to have a lot of bulk in here. So if these are punched ahead of time, I won't have to try to punch through everything at one time. You notice I put something underneath. That's just an te old telephone book. Okay. So those holes are punched. This telephone book is just something that works real well for punching holes. Now then, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our signatures... We're going to make sure that it's pretty well lined up. And I'm going to go ahead and mark these so that you can see them. I have to find the center, which is about four and a half, four and three quarters on each side. And since these envelopes are not exactly even, we're just doing the best we can. This is a recycling project, guys. Zero, two, and four. Two, and four. And I'm gonna mark them bigger before you can see them. And they're just marked right in the fold. So we now have our five marks in our signature. We have holes punched in our cover and we're going to punch the holes in the signature. Now a lot of people like to hold their signature together with a clip like so. For me that clip gets in the way. So 
that's something you have to decide. Another option. Well, I thought there was another option right here in front of me, but apparently all my paper clips have gotten used is to paper clip it. And to, sometimes the paper clips do help. You could paper clip it like that. I just usually hold it. Um, I put my thumbs into the crease on the inside and with my fingers I push down to make sure that all of my pieces, all of my pages are lined up on that crease. And then I put this down into my phone book and I might take my pokey tool and I push straight down making sure I get all the way through because if you don't and I'm, I'm holding very tight with this hand oh, see my pokey tool every once in a while decides to This last hole will be a little easier to get through because not all of my envelopes are that wide. And I'm going to turn it around and I keep holding it and I then I come back in with this left thumb and I hold it real tight because I have to poke with the, my right hand. I can't seem to poke it very well with my left hand. Now I only do one signature at a time. I set everything aside. I've still got hold of it with my thumb and I'm going to take up my book. And I'm going to go down through the center hole right here. I'm going to find the center hole in my cover. Go out. I'm going to pull it through. Now, I like to work, this is my left hand. I like to work on the side that my hand's not holding first. It just seems to work better for me. So I'm going to find my hole. And sometimes this is hard to show you and do at the same time. There we go. The hole in my signatures. And I may have to let go just a little bit. Yep, everything's off just a little bit. So what I'm having to do is to come in here and just put the pages on one at a time. Now at this point, I do try to pull it fairly snug. And I'm going to go back out through this page. And knowing that I let go of everything, knowing that these papers are a little wonky, I'm going to have to work through that hole. Just want to make sure you go through all of your pages and then through your cover. And I'll show you. See here. Through this cover. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to come back down. I'm going to go up through the same hole I went through before. I'm going to just turn it over. I'm going to go back through this same hole. Come on. There we go. OK. 
okay I'm going to go all the way to the second hole I'm going to go out this second hole up here I said just a little different than a standard three hole pam pamphlet stitch it gives me a few uh, it just ties it a little snugger I'm going to go out here come on now go on through okay and I'm going to go back out the hole I just went out. It also gives me an entire line of stitching inside and out by doing it this way. And I'm going to do it a second time so I'll show it to you again. And then I'm going to go back through the same hole here in the center. And this is pretty heavy thread so On now go on through there there we go sometimes you have to just give it a little attitude adjustment okay now what you want to do first off is make sure everything is tight Okay, and it's not real tight. I'm, I'm going to have to do some snugging. There we go. All snugged up. Nice and snug. The other thing is, is that I have two ends. And I have a piece in the middle. So I need to make sure that both my ends, one is on each side. And then I tie knot. The thing about wax linen is, it's very good about staying in a knot. And I do try to tie it in a square knot at some point. And I always tie it about three times. And then I'm just going to clip it loose. And we have one signature all sewed in to our little book. Ta-da! It's nice and fluffy already. Okay. Now I'm going to put the other signature in and I have to do exactly the same thing as I did before, only this time I'm going to stitch it in the other half of my spine. That's not folded on. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to set this aside for a minute. I'm going to get my cord ready. Well, actually, I want that so that I can measure. Because remember I said I used three, about three lengths. I did cut some off. And I will keep those pieces because they work good for dangles and other odds and ends of things. I like to have my needle ready. Because if I don't, then I've got hold of my signature with holes in it. And I'm trying to work with it. Okay, now I already have my holes in my spine. I need to get my signature all fluffed up and ready. Okay. And I'm going to take my ruler again. And it's about four and three quarters on each side, four and seven eighths on each side so remember we did zero two and four two and four and we pushed our thumbs right down into the creases Okay. 
some reason, my um, pokey tool is a little sticky. I'm going to have to clean it. Remember, I flip it over. Now, if your pages had a right side and a, a, a top side and a bottom side, you want to make sure you put it in your book right side up. I just flipped everything around because it just makes it easier, and these pages, to me, do not have an upside or a downside yet. So, I'm perfectly content whichever way they go in. Remember, I started in the middle, and I put my needle through there. And now we now have the bulk of our other signature, so it's a little harder to hold. And we go down through there. Leave yourself some tail. You, you don't want a real long one because it'll just get in your way. Find your next hole. Come up to the top hole, go down through all your envelopes. I let it go just a little bit and it's off, just a touch. It's not that it's making a problem, it's just I'm just having to put it, work it through instead of just going through nice and easy. Sometimes they don't, especially when you've already painted on the paper some because the paper's no longer exactly flat or smooth or even. Now we got to go in from the outside into that same hole. And it totally missed my signature. Just went through the... There we go. Now one of the things you want to be careful of is piercing your, your thread. You do not want to have that thread um, compromised. And with wax linen, you want to do your best to, uh, okay. to snug it as you go, but don't pull it too tight. Okay, we're going to go out. No, we're going to skip that hole. Tanya, do it right. Skip the middle. Go down through that one. up through your cover. Okay, and then back down through this one. And through your signature. Out through this one. See, they're pretty snug already, except for that very center one, which that's fine because we're going to um, pull on its end in a minute.
Okay, we're going to check Okay, that's pretty snug. That's what we want. Sorry, it wasn't quite snug inside, so I was just checking it out, making sure I got it a little bit snugger. And there we have it. Our new envelope journal. Now, it doesn't have a closure. It's already kind of fat, but that's okay because it will flatten out a little bit. Um, the pages are not all the same. They have it has a pocket. The thing is, is I wanted this particular journal to um, put in my happy mail. So this, that's what this is going to be, is to put in cards and things from um, my internet friends. This particular envelope, apparently the glue decided it's going to undo a little bit. So we're going to just mend it a little bit. That's what happens sometimes when you use, um, this is another of my favorite glues. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite glue. Um, it's Tombow Mono Aqua Glue. And um, sometimes you have to mend them just a little bit because we are recycling. And now it's all painty. Yours might not be painty if you, there's one that's almost white. Um, you can do with it what you want, but this is all from something that would normally, um, for me, end up in the recycle bin. So I really hope you have enjoyed this, and I hope that you would like to try to make one of these. Like I said, if you don't have a um, um, legal size file folder, a regular size file folder will work. Uh, you just won't have this big pocket. It might be a little tiny pocket, which, you know, or you could cut it off. Either one. You could just do it the same. And um, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm real pleased with how this came out. I'm, I'm really, I'm loving it. I'm, I'm really loving it. Um, I will probably get an elastic hairband to hold it closed just because that's, um, that will function for what I want it to do. So, I'm going to read you a quote from our 1001 Ways to Creativity and go on with the day. We all know the experience of... Oh, I've read that one before. Oh, I don't like that quote. That quote's I just awful. Although there are many legends of artists who worked, worked best while drunk, as a general rule, you should avoid alcohol when working creatively, creating drunk on inspiration instead. Okay, that was a little bit better than the last one. Okay, guys, go have fun. Make some art. I hope you enjoy this journal. If I can answer any questions about uh, what I did, please let me know. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Make some art.